Today I want to talk a little bit about bass. Although I consider myself a guitarist first and probably even a drummer after that, I think that bass is, especially in metal, the foundation of every song and every sound. That's why, even though it is not my main instrument, I constantly keep tweaking and experimenting to find the best possible bass sound for my projects. And I also believe that just because something is expensive, it doesn't necessarily sound the best or be of the best quality. So after a really long search with many trials and errors, I think I found my new favorite bass rig that's actually an all-rounder rig in my opinion for professional recording, playing live and just practicing at home. And since the entire rig is from Harley Benton, I'd even put it on the budget side of things. So let's check out if it sounds any good and if it's worth the money. What's happening everyone? Welcome to the second half of my new studio. It's still a bit of a work in progress, but it'll do for now. So when I talk about an entire bass rig that's usable for recording, gigs and practice, it must contain all of these things for me. A good bass that allows me to play everything I need to, a good amp that is capable of producing a great clean bass sound at very low and very high volume for practice and gigs, a good sounding bass cabinet that preferably doesn't weigh a ton since that's a big pain in the ass on the road, an easy method to record the signal or get it into the PA, and lastly maybe the option to tweak the sound to make it unique to your needs. So let's start off with the price and get that part out of the way so you can immediately decide if it's on the budget side for you or not. As of recording this video, the bass costs 129 euros, the amp uh, 299, the cabinet costs 319 euros, although you can get both including a speaker cable for 599, so you save a couple of bucks. And the pedal I'm using costs 29.90, which is unbelievable by the way, and I'm using that already for close to two years now, and you can hear it in every single one of my videos since then. That brings you to a total of 758 euros if you'd want the entire rig like this. This is the Harley Benton MB5 SBK Deluxe. To be honest, even though I already made such excellent experiences with Harley Benton and obviously am kind of a fanboy now, I was a bit skeptical at first about this bass because, I mean, how good can a bass for 130 bucks really be? But uh, once again, just as with my other Harley Benton bass or the white guitar, they proved me very wrong because this bass is just insane. It's so well built and came set up perfectly just as all my other guitars from Harley Benton. Fantastic fretwork, no sharp edges, the black satin finish is flawless and feels so good, especially on the neck and the action is just on point. Just as you'd expect from a high-end premium instrument, but for only 129 euros. That's so crazy. The body is made out of basswood, uh, bolt-on maple neck with the Roseacre fretboard with 21 frets. Well, you can see it's a five string and that was one very big factor for me why I wanted to check this bass out. Because I fell in love with my TB70 and I play it whenever I can, but for some songs I really need the fifth string. So when I saw this thing, I really, really wanted to see what it's capable of. You might think that because of the one pickup, which is passive by the way, which I really dig, 
uh, that it's not that versatile when it comes to sounds. But actually you can use it either as a humbucker or split both coils individually uh, with the two volume knobs so you can get all the sounds in between. SBK stands for satin black and the finish is just killer to me. It's also the third Holly Benton instrument that I own from this SBK line and I've seen that they are releasing more and more models in this finish which I find really cool. The pickguard is in this reddish finish which is debatable at least. Well it's not that much my style but if you've watched my last video uh, where you can see this bass in action it's also a question of lighting and can look pretty cool to my surprise. But every taste is different and you know me, I like to customize pretty much all of my instruments. So luckily this is for example something that is really easy to customize to your style. So that's probably something I'll be doing in the future with this bass. to this beast of an amp. This is the Harley Benton Solid Bass 600H. It's a solid state amplifier with a whopping 600 watts, four band equalizer, compressor, built in tuner, headphone out, a DI out and an effects loop, which is a total mystery because I have yet to come across a good reason for any bass player to have the need for an effects loop. So you can see that it's not a tiny high powered amp like you see more and more out there, but it's built more like an old school solid state amp, which I personally find way better because in my experience, the smaller amps tend to over compress the sound when turning up the volume and this one definitely does not. Even at high volumes, it sounds really organic and naturally uncompressed unless you turn on the built-in compressor of course which works fantastic by the way and I found to turn it up ever so slightly regardless of playing with my fingers or with a pick. And that little bit of extra weight is no issue especially with the carrying handle on the side. The absolute best feature in this amp for me is the DI out. There's a little switch beneath it which lets you decide if you want to send the DI signal out before or after the amp sound basically. So you can choose if you want a totally clean signal for recording purposes for example so you can modify your tone completely in post or you choose the signal path after the EQ and get the complete characteristics of the amp for live playing purposes, for example. And of course you can use your headphones when you don't have a speaker connected and practice at home silently. Overall, a fantastic sounding amp with all the features that I'm looking for in an all round bass amp.
solid base 410T is a 4x10 cabinet and the first thing that really surprised me was the weight. It is so much lighter than all the base cabinets I've owned and played before so with its more or less 20 kilos you can easily carry it around for gigs without breaking a sweat. You might think that because it is so light the sound could be kind of thin but that's not the case at all. It sounds very full and you can get some nice thick low frequencies out of it. But yeah, it's a great sounding bass cabinet so there's not much more to say about that. Last but not least, the Harley Benton American Sound or American True Tone pedal. As I said, I've been using this pedal since the end of 2020 and it has such a huge variety of sounds, it's just incredible. It is not even a pedal specifically for bass but sold as a guitar overdrive and it gives you a really angry, dirty, massive bass sound which for example I couldn't get from any bass specific overdrive pedal I've tested so far. I just don't like when the overdrive dirties up the sound but at the cost of the low end then at some point it just sounds like a low tuned guitar and not like a true bass. This here gives you all the low end you need for a good bass sound but adds that dirty evil character if that's what you like of course it also gives you all the sounds in between. This is it, that's my ultimate all-round bass rig on a budget, which I'm so psyched putting to good use in future productions now. I'm once again blown away by the quality Harley Benton delivers for such an affordable price. So yeah, I just wanted to share my experiences with you and in case you're looking for replacing or adding to your existing bass rig, I highly recommend you to check out Harley Benton, I promise you won't regret it. All right. That's all from me today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>